that there's a possibility that Rosman and I will be together in the future. But, you know, I'm not going to just wait around, you know, until he's ready. And also, too, I'm kind of talking to someone else. <laughs> what's going on people we are back again with another moving mad video and this one right here is all about the parts that you may have missed on 90 day fiance tell all part freaking two and the first one right there is amanda flat out saying hey hmm, rasvan doesn't know this but uh, i've got somebody else in my life now so he can have wishful thinking that when he comes to this date that maybe something may happen between me and him but in reality it's not gonna happen anytime soon because i get somebody else and to be honest with you, it's a, it's, it's a good thing that she has because I personally didn't like the way Razan was talking. He was talking as if Amanda was always going to be around for him, which I found very, very strange, to be honest with you. Um, but hey, I feel like, to be honest with you, when it comes to Razvan and Amanda, they're like two peas in a pod. I feel like Razvan is definitely, in my opinion, a womanizer, someone who thinks he can get any woman in the world. But also at the same time, I feel like Amanda feels like she can walk around treating anyone the way she wants to treat them because she's going to get away with it because I guess she may have a whole life. I don't know. But either way, though, it is what it is. I certainly see a future with her, but I don't, I don't know. Well... I am so, so glad that Riley did not end up proposing to Violet at the tell all because we know he's talked about how he had actually bought a ring and he was thinking about it. But of course, his common sense told him not to do it. And as you saw right there, that is him giving us confirmation that he has no intentions of actually making things work with Violet in the future. And I really, really hope he sticks to that because if anything, Riley definitely deserves someone who's going to give him a bit more, not even a bit more, but a whole lot more communication because communication was definitely their biggest problem. And one of the reasons why the creative was such a big problem is because Violet was just somebody who would either lie or just didn't want to answer questions for whatever reason that she saw fitting. But either way, though, it was very, very clear that Violet is someone who would not be good for Riley in the long term, at least for his mental health anyway, purely because he's a man that really needs to overstand. And, well, Violet just isn't the woman who's ever going to care about him overstanding. She's the kind of person who's only ever going to care about her own feelings. So um, kudos to him. And I really hope that he finds someone that is far better for him. And Violet can hopefully, you know, work on her communication skills. But hey. My daughters, to give him an honest chance, I just hope that people can get to know him. I just know how my world views this relationship. And I just really hope that they can see the person that I know he is. For someone who is so spiritual and is all about her faith, I do wonder why she gives a damn about people caring or wanting to accept Nicola. I mean, listen, when it comes to her daughters, 100%, I understand that. I respect that. But generally speaking, I thought the only thing that you cared about was the fact that you finally found the man that was right for you. And also, most importantly, that you guys got the annulment, which means you're now in a position where you can get married. And also, you can also have your hanky panky too. So I do find it rather strange that she's still in a position where she cares about exterior people's you know people that don't matter's opinions because the reality is this you change yourself you brought yourself to the faith because you wanted a new beginning in life from what i understand and therefore you only want to be judged only by one person one person only and that is the lord himself god so why she's talking like this for me personally i don't understand it just feels a little bit mm, a bit fishy a bit cagey all i know is this if Misha is really serious about her faith and really serious about her relationship with uh, Nicola, then hopefully she can not worry about anyone's judgment and just do what's best for herself. But most importantly, always consider her daughter's feelings as well. But right now, her daughters don't actually have a massive problem with Nicola anyway. They are just a bit concerned that he may become in the household and he may become a bit too controlling to what they can and cannot do. And as long as that is planned out in a healthy way, everything should be A-OK. -okay. But hey, it is what it is. Gonna go home, sell everything I own, and get going to England. <laughs> good night, room. Good night, me. See you better. And if it doesn't, I don't think we're gonna be able to live in a van. I don't think we're gonna be able to live together. I don't think we're gonna be able to be in a relationship. Statless, 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 statless. I mean, to be honest with you, it is quite crazy that they've already agreed to go live in the uh, van life, okay? And, you know, move around Europe and whatnot. But the fact that Dempsey's already selling her stuff and Stat is only doing it now. That's a red flag and that is a concern. That is a concern to say that Statler isn't fully convinced about it just yet. Now, of course, she talks about how she's going to do it now and hopefully she does do it. But to be honest, at the same time, though, I just don't feel like this relationship can really go any further. I just feel like they're two different women. We have two different goals in life. And to be honest with you, whenever it comes to Statler, everything that she has to do that is out of her character, she always has to make somewhat of a fuss about it. And also, she's a bit too vocal sometimes, and I feel like that's something that may not be good for Dempsey in the long run. But hey, man, you never know. Their relationship could really 
you know, take a new direction after they explore Europe together in this van. <laughs> For me personally, I just know this. That is someone that is very, very particular and very, very picky about certain things. And personally, I like the fact that she's willing to grow from the experience. But growing from the experience doesn't necessarily mean it's going to end up with her and Dempsey being happily ever after. But hey, maybe we'll, get, maybe we'll get an update about it at some point. And if we do, best know I'll be here to, get, to let you guys know. But as far as I'm concerned, I just don't feel like that they are the perfect match. I feel like Dempsey can do better. And I feel like uh, Statler needs to do a little bit more of self-care to really find herself and not to rely on other people so much. Because really and truly, her feelings aren't necessarily driven on who Dempsey is. Her feelings are more driven to the fact that she just wants to be with someone to love her. Which isn't a bad thing, but sometimes you got to ask yourself, how long is that going to last in a relationship with somebody? Mm -hmm. Very much love, for sure, with no question about that. But this whole sex tape thing came up and that, you know, just, you know, put us in, in, in the wrong direction. I'm going to try to find a way, you know, to, to live whatever happened in the tell like in the past, you know, and maybe tonight, can I say it in sign language? Gino and Jasmine. <laughs> the fact that Gino believes that they do love each other. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a possibility that they may love each other. But for me personally, I'm going to break it down in this way. Gino, for me, he's just in love with the idea that he has a woman that is good looking and a woman that wants to be with him regardless of his uh, hat fetish. And also on top of that, regardless of the fact that um, he's just a very, very strange individual. But at the same time, though, when it comes to Jasmine, she's just happy that she's with someone who would tolerate her abusive side. Someone who will put up with her explosiveness regardless of anything. So in reality, I do say to, I do say to myself, are these two generally in love with each other? Or is it just a matter of where they've just both found someone who's willing to tolerate the BS that they both bring to the table? You know what I mean? But the reality is this though. Gino thinks that, that they are mad in love. And he thinks that his love is more than enough for him to be allowed to be abused all the time by Jasmine. And Jasmine thinks that just because Gino allows her to abuse him, that it's okay for her to continuously keep doing it. <sighs> that is not a good start to a relationship. Nor will it be a very good end to a relationship neither. But look at it this way. We're going to be seeing Gino and Jasmine anyway within the next week or two because they are on the next season of 90 Day Fiance. Just, it's just a matter of which episode that they do obviously appear on. But hey, all I can say is this. Brace yourselves because we have, we have experienced Jasmine in Panama and now we are about to experience Jasmine in the United States of America. In fact, in Michigan. And that is going to be very, very interesting. Let me know what you're thinking down below and we'll talk about it. Peace.